Hi, Liam Elliott from SSW. I'm here today at NDC Sydney, and I'm here with Wesley Cabus from UCB in Belgium. He's the dev lead there, and he's also the author of the open source project Rotro, which is all about chaos testing in, in your .NET applications. And we've just finished up at his talk here at NDC, um, and it's great to have you here with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I guess let's get into it. What is chaos testing? Oh, uh, that's a big one. Uh, chaos testing is all about uh, experimenting on your code base just beyond what's what's possible with the uh, normal unit testing and integration testing. Uh, because there, with unit testing, you you have your certain path through the application. Mm -hmm. You you go from A to B. Very predictable. And, yeah, indeed, it should be predictable. It should be automatable. It should be everything that you want in a in a test. Um, but for chaos testing, you go the, the extra mile. So you're mm -hmm. going to say, what happens if I will... Well, you, well let me go back. In the integration testing, you're going to test your application using your services, your SQL database or whatever. But with chaos testing, you're going to shut down that SQL server and you will not always be prepared for this. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that your application does not start failing or starts breaking down because there's one disruptive service. And that's what you're going to do with case engineering. So we're making it a lot more, our chaos, more uh, reproducible. Yes. Maybe yeah. not so predictable, but more reproducible. You want to actually simulate those things that might happen in the future or when someone starts to do a denial of mm -hmm. service attack, but you're going to be the one in charge. to beat them. Yeah, you're, you're in charge. You know where when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, mm -hmm. so that you know which which part should be failing. Yep. If you don't know, yeah, you, you don't start chaos engineering. Okay. You really, re really need to make sure that you, you know what you're doing. Great. Do you want to get into some code here and we'll see, see your right row in action? Yeah, sure. I just prepared something extra uh, from that I didn't show during my talk because I didn't want to screw up my demos. <laughs> Um, so I created li a little movie service here, as you can see on the screen, where I have some movies predefined because I didn't want to do a database, might have taken me too long to implement. Um, so just grab some titles from IMDb and I'm going to return a random movie when you do a request to this Azure function. And I configured my function just, well, it's going to be basic code, you know, when you call it with a get request. It fetches a random movie, it's a sync, so we have to await the result and then we return OK with the movie. And this should just work. So if I go to Postman, I'm going to zoom it a little bit, that it's a little bit bigger. I do a request and I managed to, do, to get this deployed, so it's running in the cloud. And let me hit the send button. It's so, OK, my, my Azure function is now spun down, so it needs some time to reboot. Um, and it will return a movie eventually. Normally, it doesn't take this much time, but yeah, it happens. Let me, oh, there we go. So we got Inception back and it took us 18.4 seconds. Let me hit it again. And now it's only 205 milliseconds. I'm going to do it one more time because I said during my chaos uh, setup, that every third time that I'm calling this function, it would slow down. So now I'm actually disrupting a live service in Azure and people will not like me for this. 15.2 seconds. And again, this one is fast. This one is also fast. And so this is similar to the testing that we hear from the likes of the big boys like uh, Netflix and Amazon? True, yeah, because um, if you want to watch a movie on Netflix, uh, for example, and you, you, you start your player, uh, if you have to wait 15 seconds for that first uh, fee to arrive, you're not going to be a very happy customer. <laughs> so what they do is they disrupt these services themselves uh, in their own environments and even in production um, so that they can beat the masses. So before it happens, before it happens live, they will have tested these situations themselves um, by disrupting it in their own environments. They will not do it the same way that I'm doing it. Uh, they will typically run a, an agent next to the service to actually disrupt the service on, on the box itself while I'm doing it in code. So if I you, go... You were saying in, during your talk that um, your bosses wouldn't be too happy with you if you're doing yeah. it on the live production. They will probably kick me out yep. if I do that. So we're a bit more 
bit more of a controlled chaos. Indeed. So here in, in, in the startup class of the Azure function where I configure my services, I've also added some code here to affect that same service, that movie service. And I just said, when I'm calling the get random movie async method, I'm going to slow it down with 15 seconds. As you could see during my test, it took 15 point something seconds. Uh, every third call. So it will run fine the first, the second, the fourth, the fifth, and so on. But every multiple of three, it will slow. It will be slowed down with 15 seconds. And um, so what other effects can we do with uh, each of your requests? Um, I have three effects at this moment. So the first one, as you can see, is a slow, uh, slow it down by. Uh, the other one is uh, to throw exceptions, to mm -hmm. simulate running out of disk space or memory or having a typical timeout exception occurring or a SQL exception occurring. Um, and the third one is to actually change the result that you get back. So at this moment, when you call the method, you get a random movie, but you might also want to change that movie into something completely different. Or you might set properties to null that are not supposed to be null so that you can check your application that it deals with those situations as well. And so then we've got the every end call. Mm -hmm. So that's happening after every third call. Yep. What, other, what other triggers are available there? Um, well, there's a lot of triggers that use a number of times expression, like three in this case. Uh, you, you can say just to, to, to fail after a certain number of calls, before a certain number of calls, um, but also time-based. So you can say um, stop failing or start failing after noon or between 2 and 3 p.m. in combination also with a day time so that you can say during this Friday between 2 and 3 p.m. will start failing this method so that you can really plan your experiments, yeah. your chaos experiments uh, together with the schedule and inform people should you do this, for example, in an acceptance environment where you have testers also working, that you can say, okay, dear testers, during this Friday, 2, 3 p.m., you will start seeing some special effects occurring. Um, so be, please be aware that if you call this or this piece of the application, that logging in might take 30 seconds more than usual. Um, so that they are also aware and that they can see that it still works, but it just took some more time. Mm -hmm. Or that it they don't ideally notice anything at all because you have a chaos uh, a circuit breaker pattern in place. So do you want to maybe show us through some extra, um, some extra, the, some of the extra features? Yeah. So in my demo that I gave during my talk, um, I had here an example. Uh, this is a Windows application using uh, UWP and Windows Hello to sign in. And here I I said, okay, when you try to sign in with Windows Hello, every uh, well, the first two times it runs fine, but then, from the third time on, this would throw an exception. And initially it failed, but I fixed this in the code already, that it doesn't fail anymore, mm -hmm. because you could mitigate this problem. But it would simulate the fact that you're depending on Windows Hello, which you can't control. Um, and then you can test what would happen if Windows Hello, for example, because of your fingerprint reader having a problem, couldn't work that well. And the second one was is the same as we did now with the movies. In this case, it's uh, retrieving customers and I'm going to slow it down with 10 seconds. Uh, and this one, the third one was a simulation of a disk space error. So that you run out of disk space, we throw an IOPS exception when you try to write something to, to the logging service. The last one, however, is a tiny bit more interesting. You can see it by the amount of code that is needed. <laughs> Um, because here we're actually transforming a customer that you get back from the application uh, into Chuck Norris. So we're Chuck Norris Norrisifying everyone that we're getting <laughs> back. Uh, I can run this one as well that we can see it in action. So if I log into this application and I give to the customers, so every third one is being transformed into Chuck Norris. And everything so now else, we can be more defensive about about those results coming back. And, yeah, you cannot be more defensive about Chuck Norris because <laughs> he will kick your ass. But uh, in this case, you can see that you've transformed uh, data that was existing yep. and then just 
took pieces of it and changed them. Uh, in this case, it's fairly uh, well safe to change a mm -hmm. name uh, and a last name. But if you start changing critical stuff like the customer ID, you might get into some problems. Yeah, and, yeah that should not happen, of course, in production times. Um, but this could be, be very uh, handy to to mimic uh, concurrency exceptions, mm -hmm. where you can say, uh, I, I have now the latest version, but let's simulate that someone else was just quicker than me to update this person. Then I can simulate the fact that my uh, version timestamp is a bit lower, and then let's see if my concurrency exceptions mm -hmm. actually work. And so could you say, could you say this kind of chaos testing fitting into the CI CD pipeline? Yes, definitely. Um, that was actually indeed one of the questions that I got during this talk, and I was actually happy with the questions that I got because <laughs> they were quite good. Um, indeed, uh, when you set this up, now I'm doing this, of course, in my application, but it would be best if we could add this into our testing uh, mm -hmm. environment. And then part of our testing uh, test plans or test suites that we run, that we can say now we're running this against uh, these chaos tests. Mm -hmm. uh, or even plan them with a, another service that we can call into and then have them configured dynamically. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not supporting those workloads just yet, but they are uh, on the backlog of this uh, product that I'm building. Well, pro I say probably, but it's going to be free. Um, so that you can indeed plan these uh, these experiments. Uh, also, again, some a question that I got before is supporting this with the BDD style, with a spec flow style that you can really write yep. your uh, chaos uh, experiments in English and then have them translated into what you see here in code. Sure. So that would be very interesting to, to mm. see that happening. But yeah, not just yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything else you want to show us about the rot roll um, well, framework that you've got? There is, uh, it's a it's a repository and an organization on GitHub. So I have uh, my my work here is in here. My extensions uh, that I currently support the Microsoft dependency injection package. Uh, I will also support other DI mm -hmm. containers like Autofac. Um, there's also a sample here that uh, displays the use of Rutro in a web API in mm -hmm. SPNet Core. Um, this, of course, will grow over time. Um, and I'm currently working because during my demo, I only show uh, overriding or calling methods that return something. Um, well, I can't open it because it would take too long, but I'm currently working on supporting void methods, uh, property getters and setters. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope to get that in by the end of this week. I've not been able to spend as much time as I wanted to spend on the uh, row, row, unfortunately, because of other time constraints. But uh, I will be spending more time uh, to the end of the year, and I hope to have a version one of this uh, library ready in a few mm -hmm. months. And so there's, you've listed a couple of effects that are, that are already in the system. Mm -hmm. but can you think of any more that you'd like to see down the track that, that other people may have mentioned that would be a great idea to, to get out there? At this time, um, effects, I don't think that I have others planned because it's also difficult to, to figure out the use of them yep. in real life situations. Slowing down and throwing exceptions is already quite disruptive. Um, on the trigger side, I had some, uh, some questions for a, like, like Polly, uh, it has a retry mm -hmm. mechanism which is increasing every time. Yep. Because now it's fixed. If you yep. if you now say slow it down by, it's going to be fixed. But you would be able then to say slow it down by an increasing time. Sure. Uh, that you can say every time you increase it with a power of two, for example. Yep. An exponential back off. Yep. Indeed. So mm -hmm. that you can really stress test your uh, circuit breaker uh, or retry policies. So you've got Rut Row as an open source project. Yes. You're taking pull requests. So if anyone out there can think of extra effects that maybe you can't think of right now, true. Yeah. You're taking pull requests for them to. I to definitely consider them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I already had one uh, to fix something in the sample, so mm -hmm. uh, I do welcome pull requests. Sure. <laughs> And issues. If you have, if you think of something and you don't feel like picking it mm -hmm. up yourself, just uh, create an issue. Um, I think I have some actually open. It's not a lot. Most of them are based on myself, uh, but this is the one I was talking about. 
So to have a slow it down width yep. to support uh, increasing or decreasing the delay. Yeah, I could go to my talk again, but that would take an hour. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I think I covered most of it, yeah. Thanks, Wesley. Thanks for joining me. Um, it's great to, to sit down and to go through a topic that, you know, I'm not 100% not familiar with, but definitely a framework that's, that's going to make my life easier moving forward and make my code more robust. Um, I hope you're enjoying your time here in Sydney at NDC. Yeah. Um, and thanks for watching. This is Liam Elliott at SSW.